start with we will continue with the discussion on dynamic arrays so in previous session we have started with the dynamic arrays like what are this dynamic arrays and what is the difference between the dynamic arrays and the packed arrays and unpacked arrays so we have seen that uh, in case of dynamic arrays uh, the allocation of memory takes place during the runtime but whereas in the case of packed arrays and unpacked arrays the memory allocation is taking place at the compile time right and we have also seen the difference between the compile time and runtime what is the difference between the compile time and runtime right now so let's see the uh, dynamic arrays and let's see what is this syntax and how to declare the dynamic arrays, how to allocate the memory to this dynamic arrays, all the things we'll see now, okay? So coming to the syntax of dynamic arrays, dynamic arrays. So coming to the syntax of the dynamic arrays, so int, uh, sorry, uh, data type followed by array name, followed by empty braces. So this is the syntax of dynamic array. Data type, array name, and uh, empty braces, right? Wait a minute. So this is the uh, syntax for dynamic arrays. What is this? Uh, data type, followed by array name, followed by empty braces. So in the data type, you can use int data type or logic data type or any data type you can use for this, okay? Now, let's see an example using int data type. So let's declare two dynamic arrays of int data type, int dyn and, so this is first dynamic array and int dynamic array two dyn2, okay? So these are my two dynamic arrays. One is dyn1 and another, another is dyn2, okay? Is this clear? Just I am declaring two dynamic arrays of int data type. Okay. So let's uh, write initial beginning block. So in this initial beginning block, what I will do is I will assign memory for this dynamic array dyn1. Okay. So how to assign memory for dynamic array? So we can assign memory to this dynamic array using the keyword new okay so using the keyword new we can create a memory for our dynamic uh, dynamic array because why we are creating because we haven't mentioned any size of the dynamic array in the compile time right so we should uh, create a memory during the runtime okay with the help of keyword new we will create a memory for this dynamic array during the runtime because we haven't uh, declared any size for this dynamic array during the compile time so we will create a memory during the runtime okay so within an initial beginning block what i will do i will write dyn1 is equal to new of let's say i will have five elements in this so i'll write five okay so a dynamic array with five element five memory locations will be created like this so dynamic array with five locations will be created like this okay this is dyn1 Okay, next. So, uh, by using a for each loop, for each of dyn1 of i, I will write dyn1 of i is equal to i. So, first let me explain how this uh, for each loop works, then we will come back to this step. So this for each loop is uh, actually introduced in system Verilog. It is not present in Verilog. So let's see how this for each loop works. So let's say suppose if you are using in the case of for example only for each of dyn of i is equal to i. Okay. For each of dyn1 of i. Okay. So basically what it will do is so for example, uh, if we want to use for loop, then we will write like this for uh, int i is equal to zero, i less than dollar size of dyn1, dollar size of dyn1, i is equal to i plus one, right? And we will assign dyn1 of 
i is equal to i so by using for loop or for each loop we can insert the elements basically what i am doing here i am basically inserting the elements into my dynamic arrays so how what are the methods available i can use a for each loop or i can also use a for loop so by using for each loop uh, sorry by using for loop what i am doing i am declaring a, a integer i which is equal to 0 i am initializing it and i less than so i will be incrementing basically i will be starting from 0 and it should increment up to what value it should increment the size of the dynamic array in this case the dynamic array size is five elements okay so the i value will increment from 0 to 0 1 2 3 4 okay so it will come up to 4 and after reaching 4 it uh, it will come out of this loop so what happens in this for loop so i value dyn 1 of 0 will be equal to 0 and dyn 1 of 1 will be equal to 1 so on up to dyn 1 of 4 will be equal to 4 like this i am writing all the uh, elements into my all the memory locations using the for loop is this clear the for loop is clear yeah, yeah. now how to use this for each loop so basically instead of writing all these things by using the for each loop what can i do is uh, by using for each loop what happens is uh, it will automatically detect the size of the uh, memory like uh, it will automatically uh, determine the memory size and the uh, variable i is also pre-built okay so it is inbuilt okay so no need of declaration of this uh, variable i also okay so basically it will iterate from 0 so basically it will iterate from 0 and it will increment up to i is equal to 4 okay using this for each loop uh, we don't need to write all these things it will all it will automatically increment the values of i okay so this is the advantage of using a for each loop is this clear yeah. Now, I think I have erased it or what? Ah, oh, no, no, yeah. So, here uh, initial begin dyn1 is equal to new of 5. So, I am creating a memory here, okay. I am creating a memory using the new operator. And how many locations are there? Total 5 locations are there. And using a for each loop, I am inserting the elements into this dynamic array. I am inserting the elements. Okay. Now, so in next step, what I will do is, so in next step, uh, I will, I have declared two dynamic arrays, right? One is dyn1 and another is dyn2. So, instead of creating memory for dyn2 separately using the keyword new, what I will do is, I will basically assign this dyn2 equal to dyn1, that's it, okay. Basically, what I am doing is, I am copying the elements of, copying the elements of dyn1 to dyn2. So, without creating a memory for dyn2, by using the keyword dyn2 is equal to new, Without using this uh, syntax, what I am doing is, I am basically copying the elements of dyn1 to dyn2. Then what happens? The elements which are present in dyn1 will be copied to dyn2. Okay. So what happens is basically, before copying the elements, a memory will be created for dyn2 and all the elements from dyn1 will be copied to dyn2. Is this syntax clear? So first, the uh, memory for dyn2 will be created like this. And all the elements which are present in dyn1 will be copied to dyn2. Is it clear? Yeah. Next. So this is how we will copy the elements from uh, one dynamic array to another dynamic array without creating the memory for the second dynamic array explicitly. What we will do? We will uh, we can copy the elements from dynamic array one to dynamic array two. Okay. I hope it is clear. Now. Let's say if we want to, uh, 
if you want to increase the size of the anime correct we want to increase the size of dynamic array so for increasing the size of dynamic array we have basically two methods okay so in first method what happens is the existing elements will be deleted existing elements will be deleted and in second method the existing here the existing elements will be deleted and the size will be increased okay and the size is increased and in the second case what happens the existing elements remains as it is remains as it is and the size increases okay do remember this two points these are very very important so uh, there are two methods for increasing the size of dynamic arrays in first method the existing elements will be deleted and the size is increased okay and in the second method the existing elements remains as it is and the size also increases okay let's see what is this method 1 and method 2 so for achieving method 1 what we will do basically is so what is method 1 the existing elements will be deleted and the size is increased okay so in this method 2 what we will do basically is okay so we have this dynamic array dy and 1 right so we have allocated a memory and we have inserted some elements okay now we need so what is the size here 5 5 memory locations we have for dy and 1 now we need to change the size from 5 to 10 okay 5 to 10 by using the method 1 by using the method 1 so what happens in method 1 the existing elements will be deleted and 5 more locations will be created okay now let's see how to do that so basically we will write dyn1 is equal to new of 10 so this is the method 1 of increasing the size of dynamic array so what is happening in this case the existing elements in the previous dynamic array which are being inserted will be deleted and new 5 more locations will be created is this clear the method one is clear so if you see this anywhere uh, can you able to understand what is happening is it clear yeah, yeah. next coming to method two what is method two so method two is the existing elements remains and the size also increases okay so in method one the existing elements are deleted and the size is increasing but if we want the existing elements not to be not to get deleted and the size should increase then what we will do is simply write the dynamic array dy n1 followed by new of we need 10 simply write dy n1 is equal to new of 10 followed by dy n1 okay so this is method 2 so what is this method 2? The existing elements in the previous dynamic array dyn will stay as it is and extra, okay, we want 5 more locations, right? So we will write 5. So extra 5 locations will be created. Is it clear? So these are the two methods which are present for increasing the size of the dynamic arrays. What are the two methods? So the existing elements will be deleted and the size is increased. And in the second method, the existing elements remains as well as the size also increases. Okay. So these are the two methods which we use for uh, increase the size of the dynamic array. Now let's see some built-in functions which are available in dynamic arrays. So first one is size. So basically it will return the current number of elements in the dynamic array. So using this size operate uh, size built-in function, we will come to know the size of the dynamic array, size of dynamic array. For example, you can use here they have declared a dynamic array dyn underscore array and they are displaying the size of the dynamic array is equal to percentage d comma dyn array dot size. So this will basically retain the size of the dynamic array. This will basically retain the size of 
dynamic array so by using this dot size operator we will get the size of the dynamic array sorry built in function we will get the size of the dynamic array not operator okay next deletion so if you want to delete any uh, if you want to delete the dynamic array then we can use dyn underscore array dot delete so using this uh, delete operate uh, delete function we can delete a dynamic array all the elements present in this dynamic array let's say suppose if we have declared two dynamic arrays dyn1 and dyn2 and if we want to delete this dynamic array then simply write dyn2 dot delete okay so it will get deleted right so this is about dynamic arrays in system below. So we have started in this session, we have started the discussion with the syntax of the dynamic array and we have seen how to declare a dynamic arrays and we have seen the example of copying the dynamic arrays from one array to another array. And we have seen how to uh, copy the elements from one dynamic to uh, array to another dynamic array and we have seen how to increase the size of the dynamic array we have seen the two methods and we have also seen the built-in functions present in the dynamic array okay now so let's uh, say this case we have seen this right dyn2 is equal to dyn1 so if you make any changes in this dyn1 if we make any changes in dyn1 will it reflect in dyn2 will it reflect in dyn2 we have basically copied right in the previous code I have shown you, right? Yeah. yeah. Why can you give any explanation? I think both uh, both DYN1 and DYN2 will be accessing from the same location. Yes. So both DYN2 and dyn1 will share same memory location so that's why if we, if any changes are made in dyn1 it will get reflected in dyn2 also so yeah so this is about today's session so in this session we have discussed with dynamic arrays in system well so in next session we will start with the discussion of queues okay so that's all for this session so if you are having any doubts or queries you can stay and ask me or else we can end this session thank you mm -hmm.